NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2 took place earlier today from Blackpool, England in the Empress Ballroom, the same video that hosted last year's show in Blackpool. And uh, this was a great show. I thought this was a fantastic show. We had some great matches on here. Everything delivered to what I was expecting, really. And uh, I really enjoyed it. You had a lot of uh, good things on the show. You had a variety of different things, which I thought was good. You had great wrestling matches. You had high spots. You had matches that were more technically blazed, matches more high-flying. I thought you had a lot of variety on the show. Um, also, the crowd was great. You don't get crowds like this in the United States very often. You don't get, I mean, to be fair, in the United States, you get a lot of crowds. With the more stuff you have, you're not going to have a, sp a special crowd. But in the UK, this was a special show to them, and they really uh, showed it. They loved the whole show. So it really works well in the UK. And I will say, I think this is much better live than it would be on TV. I do think there is a bit of a, I don't know, I don't want to say culture gap, because in the US and UK aren't too different, but... This does feel a bit more grounded in, in its uh, area. This is feels much more regional, to be honest. Uh, the UK, but in the US, I, I feel. But anyway, uh, this is actually a third takeover they've done. Uh, on the pre-show, you had uh, them uh, previewing the show. This is actually a kickoff show, actually. You had Andy Shepard, you had Tom Phillips, and you had William Riga, who's the NXT UK general manager. And uh, they preview the matches. Finally, we get to the show. We start off with a good video package. And you have Tom Phillips and uh, Nigel McGuinness as the announcers. And we start off with Eddie Dennis and Trent Seven. Okay, this was a good match. The one thing I like, this is more of a big guy match, a hard-hitting match, a beat-them-up beat match. This was fast-paced. really never slowed down. And one thing I love is I think this is the kind of match that should start a show. Have a hard hitting match, go quick, but at the same time do a lot, but you know have it grounded. I don't, I don't agree with you know having a big match, a big man match, and having it drag on too much. Just was around eight minutes it was a perfect uh, time for it, and uh, they beat each other up. We had uh, so, some brief offense by Trent Seven, but this was more of a showcase for Eddie Dennis. Uh, you had probably the craziest part of the one of the best spots of the show. And this is going to be overshadowed because there's so much more crazy shit that happened. But Eddie Dennis gets Trent Seven. And he has him in a racer's edge. And he's going to throw him into the turnbuckle. But uh, Seven's able to try, to try to maneuver his body away from it. But instead, Dennis gets, still has him. He throws him out of the ring. And he lands back first into the barricade. It was the nastiest razor edge you'd see. It was fucking insanity. What a crazy move. Oh, that was like, holy shit. Then after that, Eddie Dennis throws him in the ring, uh, goes for a pin. Trent Seven kicks out. However, Eddie Dennis hits the next stop driver and gets the win. So good showcase for Dennis. Win over Trent Seven uh, there. Next, we go to a triple threat match for the NXT UK Women's Championship. You had the champion Kaylee Ray defending her title against Tony Storm and Paper Niven. They have a good way to start up uh, with the, the video to preview the match, to tell the story of Tony wanting to get her title shot. She wants to rematch. It's almost like a Tony Storm heel turn, and uh, there's problems with her and her friend Piper Niven. And uh, that they, they, they sell the dynamic pretty well going into this match. Tony Storm comes out, gets a nice reaction. Piper Niven comes out. Uh, she gets this rea not a decent reaction, too. And she's is the third, by far, like the third popular star, least popular star. So she was fine. Uh, Kayla Ray, champion. She's a good heel, I think. I think she does better as the heel. Um, I think she, there's something about her. I think there's something about her and Choni. There's a good heel face dynamic. So what you have is uh, Choni Storm goes after Kaylee. She wants to get her, uh, beat her up. Uh, Piper then gets, uh, she hits a dive for the ropes and she hits like two cannonballs onto both of them. She hit uh, Choni and a cannonball onto the barricade, I believe, and she hit one onto uh, Kaylee Ray onto the steps, which actually looked really nasty. They fight each other. Uh, and then uh, Choni tried to hit a, a Storm Zero, but uh, Piper Niven uh, blocked it. And uh, you can clearly tell they both want uh, Kaylee Ray, but Choni and uh, Piper are fighting. And what you have later is uh, Kaylee Ray. She is down in the match, and she goes down to the ring, and she goes for almost an equalizer. She goes to take a steel chair for an advantage. And she starts choking her, and she tries to kill Choni Storm by, uh, you know, pulmonizing her neck. But Piper Niven saves Tony and uh, stops it. Tony Storm then got the chair and she started uh, 
you know, she was threatening to use it on paper, anything uh, paper screams at her to use it. And then Kaylee Ray um, looks down on them, and uh, she eventually. Choni and uh, Piper actually they form an alliance. They go after Kaylee Ray. Choni hits a suicide dive on Kaylee Ray, and uh, uh, Piper Nevin hits a cannonball from the apron, which actually looked really good. And then they go, uh, they go back to ringside. Uh, they're both recovering from their dives. Kaylee Ray, however, is able to hit a top rope somersault dive onto both of them, taking them both out. That was a great spot. So I'm really liking this match. That was really entertaining. Uh, Choni uh, gets goes for uh, a superplex. But uh, Piper Niven uh, is able to hit a sit-down powerbomb. Uh, and however, Kaylee Ray breaks it up. Not one of the most impressive spots was Kaylee Ray hits her finisher, which is the Glory Bomb. She actually gets Piper Niven up. She hits. It looks like that's it. One, two. But Tony Storm gets right in the middle of the ring. She grabs the referee's hand and prevents him from counting to the three, which was great. Tony looked great doing that, by the way. I, I have to say, she, she was just so beautiful. How could you not love Tony Storm? She's going to be a star. That was from the best spots. Another crazy part was Piper Devin hit a kick, like this Canadian Destroyer type move on uh, Kaylee Ray, which actually looked really crazy the way she hit it. But then Tony Storm is able to get in the ring. She hit the, the Storm Zero onto Kaylee Ray. It looks like that was going to be at one, two, but uh, you know, Piper Devin hits Tony in the back and breaks it up. There was a. Storm hits a, a Storm Zero on Kaylee Ray onto the back of Piper Niven. Look, that, that, that was going to be it. However, she couldn't get her up. And um, she tries to get on Piper Niven, but she, like, she, it's not strong enough. She gets like a pedigree. And then after she hits the pedigree, she hits a frog splash off the top rope on Piper Niven. However, Kaylee Ray comes in as the heel. She uh, kicks uh, Tony Storm, throws her out, and then she just pins Piper Niven. One, two, three. So Tony Storm really gets protected here. They have a lot for her. They think she's a star. And I've said Tony Storm's going to be a big star. She has everything. She has uh, the luck. She's beautiful. She has a great body. She's athletic. She's a very good worker. She's very likable. She has a lot of charisma. She's good on the mic. Uh, she's, you know, beautiful. She has everything. She's going to be a star. They can't fuck her up. And they could. I mean, but I mean, if they mess her up, that'd be bad. But uh, there's a way to protect her. I don't think they want to have her lose to Kaylee again. And now uh, Choni goes on to face Rhea Ripley, actually, for the NXT title at uh, Worlds Collide. And uh, we'll see who Kaylee Ray faces next. Maybe she, I don't think maybe I don't think it makes sense to go after Piper. Uh, but uh, Kaylee, she retains the title, and uh, they'll keep pushing her as a UK Women's Champion. Next. You go to Tyler Bate and Jordan Devlin. And this was a match I was looking forward to. And But the thing was, it wasn't necessarily a big match because there wasn't too much stakes onto it. It wasn't a title match. However, I thought they might have had the best match. This was incredible. These are two of the best wrestlers in Europe. Uh, both of them are stars. Uh, Tyler Bate's one of the best wrestlers in, in the world. I've said that before. Uh, Tyler Bate, him and Pete Dunne, I think, are, you can arguably say they're the two best workers in the company in the entire WWE. Uh, Jordan Devlin is also great, but I think Bait and Dunn, those guys are just, they're unreal. These guys beat each other up, they hit everything on each other. It was a technical masterpiece, which is what I love. I mean, this was more so of a match where it's a wrestler's match. If you like technical wrestling, you like more of amateur wrestling style, you like more of shooting style, like more realistic. Uh, this was absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best matches of the year. I thought this I thought this was the match of the night. I, and I'm someone who loves high, I love ladder matches too, but... I thought this probably was the best match. So, crowd's going crazy for Tyler Bate. They absolutely love Tyler Bate. Uh, Devlin, uh, he gets the heat early on uh, on uh, Bate. But Bate is able to fight back. He gets some offense in later. Uh, however, Jordan Devlin hits an elevated uh, belly-to-back suplex onto him. Uh, he only gets a two count. They have uh, some... Um, Back and forth. There's some pretty stiff kicks here. Pretty noticeable. I mean, they look... Man, these guys are really paying each other up. That's what I was thinking to myself. Uh, Devlin... He tries to hit the Devlin slide, but uh, again, Tyler Bate uh, reverses it. He fights back. Match starts to get good. Fans start to sing a little bit later into the match. I was thinking, all right, here we go. They're just going to sing the whole time like last year. Um... They have some uh, spots in the match when you're watching it. I'm thinking to myself, Ooh, I mean, this isn't going to be it because I wasn't expecting it to go this long. I was thinking this was going to last a lot, or last, uh, last lot shorter than it really did because it's not necessarily a title match. So title matches aren't going to take that long. However, this was this felt like a major match. 
And this was this really delivered. I think if this was the main event for a title match, this would have been an all time classic. But th the thing is, this completely overshadowed the main event. It blew it away. It blew it out of the water. This probably should have been the title match. And I guess Tyler Bate probably faces Walter maybe at the next show, but he has some really entertaining stuff. Tyler Bate goes for the Tyler Driver uh, 17, but Devlin escaped. He goes for a Devon slide. Uh, th there were some really good counter counters here. Um, Devlin, he goes to the top rope. He tries to hit a moonsault, but uh, Devlin, or uh, Dunch, or uh, Bate actually shoved him off the ropes. And you have a good spot where uh, they hit an avalanche Spanish fly. Then uh, by a Devlin, he hits a Devon slide with Bate. Kick so like right at the last second. I thought it was look one two. It was a Kurt Angle kick out. He just kicked out right at the last second. That was a great part. Um, Tyler uh, or uh, Jordan Devlin goes for another Tyler. He goes for a Tyler driver onto Tyler Bate, but Bate is able to get out. And what happens is near the end of the match, uh, Pete Dunn or uh, Jesus Christ, Tyler Bate hits a Springboard DDT, and then he hits a Tyler driver, and then. Devlin, he kicks out right at the last second. That was just as awesome. However, after it looks like what else is gonna do? How else is he gonna win? Tyler Bateman hits a top rope, uh, corkscrew plancha. He gets the win. Uh, great win there. So uh, Tyler Bateman with the win, huge win, massively over. He was the most over guy in the whole uh, show here. Tyler Bates a star, absolutely fantastic wrestler. I liked him as a tag team with uh, Trent Seven. But I think he's a uh, much better just single star. Uh, and the, as he celebrated, show Triple H, William Regal, and Johnny Saint all uh, celebrating on the bal in the balcony watching it. So uh, great for Tyler Bate. Next, we go to a ladder match for the NXT UK Tag Team Championship. This was the match I wanted to see the most. Uh, I'm a huge fan of ladder matches. He had Gallus, which is Wolfgang and Mark Coffey, who are the champions defending their titles against the Grizzled Young Veterans, which are Zach Gibson and Dra James Drake. Against Mark Andrews and Flash Gordon Webster, who are the previous champions, and, and uh, Imperium, who's being represented by Marcel Barker and uh, Fabian Eichner. This was a great ladder match. I have to say, I want to compare it, I think it's fair. NXT on the US brand had a ladder match in, uh, I think it was last year in the summer. This wasn't as good as that. I thought the one in the US was better. But this was still a very good ladder match. Um, they did some really good spots. They didn't kill themselves. Like I don't think they need to kill themselves every single show. Time to every single time to do a ladder match. But there was part the, the big spot was the 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 double dive on through the table. We'll get to that later. That was the craziest part. But um, you had some hard stuff here, and it was a, it was a creative ladder match. They worked hard. And they tried to tell the story. Like it seemed like they wanted to do the story of someone winning rather than just you know doing crazy spots and getting a big pop from the crowd. So uh, the the big uh, five ladder spot was cool too. That happened uh, early in the match. Anyway, we get in. Uh, they do. It's kind of starts how you start off. You know, you see some dives early. Uh, they they set up the ladders eventually, and finally, they start using the ladder. One thing that really annoyed the hell out of me was. There's one ladder that's so fucking short, and it just, oh, it was so bad, like, because you know they never, never get to the titles with it. Anyway, uh, you saw some moonsaults uh, early in the match. There was a, a slingshot onto the ladder, which was good. Uh, they hit each other with the ladder. They had the usual setups, uh, and then one in the corner, stuff like that. Nothing that you really haven't seen before. There was a, a good slingshot Samoan drop uh, onto a, another ladder, which looked good. Um, Imperium, what they did was they they were the the team where I, I thought they were going to win because I thought it was going to be Imperium against the other Spirit Era at Worlds Collide. Everyone's going to be champions, but they didn't do it. Um, that's, that was my prediction. They didn't go that uh, route. There was parts in the match where there was really apparent how short the ladder was to go back to it. And I think it was Flash Morgan Webster and uh, they... They climbed, their team, they climbed the ladder and it looked so bad because it was, oh, like it was so short. I don't know. Uh, there was uh, parts of the match too where, you know, things things weren't necessarily making sense to be honest. But it got, it picked up later. It certainly did. I think once they started uh, adding more weapons here, they used the steps. There was a big step spot. And eventually we'd get yeah, more weapons. Six, we'd get tables set up. 
You get a chair, I believe, as well. So they're adding more weapons. Um, there was uh, some uh, cool parts in which they eventually go to the big five. You know, they set everything up. There's, a, I think it's three ladders set up, and then you have two of them set up in between the ropes. Or sorry, actually one set up in between the ropes that connects to the ladder. Uh, and then, of course, one that was like used to lean on a guy. They're all up. All everyone's there. Every single man in the match is there. Eventually, they start to fall off. Two of them uh, fall off from one ladder, and they go into the 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 ring ropes. Then you had them just fall off one by one. Some would just fall off from being punched. Some would fall off on the other ways. And then you set up the structure. It looked funny. It looked like this giant playground pyramid structure. And it's probably really cool for kids, but like when you're, I don't know, I, there's something about it that's, that when they do it, it just it looks like, I don't know, <laughs> it does look a bit cheesy when they do it a bit, you know, because it's not necessarily realistic. Why is everyone trying to climb at the same time? Why not like try to take people down? But um, it did look okay. They, they've done it before. Uh, you had a 450 splash off one of the propped up bars, which was good. You had a um, Imperium come in the ring and they took people down. Uh, there was, uh, uh, I think, Eichner and Barthel both got squashed in between two ladders and got hit uh, repeatedly with them. There was uh, some uh, good kick combos. Eventually, we go to the outside. And this is uh, where the craziest stuff happened, which was the table spot. You have Gallus taking out some tables. They set the two tables up on the barricade. And then you had uh, Andrews and Webster. Uh, they come back and they start fighting them back, both up, both off. And what you have on one side of the outside is two tables set up on each end, and then you have a table in the middle or a ladder up on the, in the middle. Uh, one of them, I think it's uh, Coffee. He just he was fat. He just fell through the table. I think it was a botch, a legit botch. He just fell through the table. But the other one, which was Wolfgang, he was set up on the other side. And what happened is uh, Flash and um, uh, or sorry, Andrews and uh, Flash Webster, they climb up the top of the ladder together and like they, they stand up and they hit a double swan tombon off the ladder through a table that was set up on the barricade onto the ground. Craziest spot of the night. That was just insane. It looked so dangerous, but ooh, it was fucking insanity. They, then uh, eventually they get back to the ring. Uh, they, uh, they climb up uh, some of the ladders in the ring, the smaller ladders, but the young veterans attack uh, Andrews and Webster. They, they try to fight them off, but... Eventually, uh, there's a spot in which someone, uh, one team just gets th like thrown through the ladder that was set up in the corner, which looked nasty as hell. Say so the ladder break spot as well. Um, and eventually, you have um, Coffee after Wolfgang uh, speared Eichner through the ladder. Uh, Coffee tips over the ladder that Barthel was on and he throws um, Bar Marcel Barthel onto everyone else who was like getting up from the outside so everyone gets taken out uh, after Gallus destroys everyone and they climb up the ladder and retrieve the titles and they retain the NXT UK tag team titles hell of a match up there really good match really good ladder match and then eventually we get to the main event which was Walter against Joe Coffey for the, NX for the WWE United Kingdom Championship I thought this was good I just thought it was good. I didn't love it. Did not love this match. I thought it was just okay. Well, it was a bit too slow for me at parts, I'll be honest. Um, I understand it's a long match, but I just felt like I, I liked, I felt like Tyler Bate and um, Jordan Devlin should have been the main event because they had a much better match. So this was good. It was a long, slow match. It went uh, into the barricade early, so he had that. Uh, it was more of a methodical match, just how Walter usually does it. That's what I was thinking. I, I see Joe Coffey. I think this should just be more of like this 10-minute beat-em-up match instead of like this long, drawn-out main event. And that's what's happened in the last three shows. They've all been like these long matches. That's what they've been doing. Um, it, it was, again, it was a good match. It's not great here. Walter and Coffey have a good matchup. Walter is very over with the crowd. Uh, Coffee gets some stuff here. It looks like he couldn't knock off Walter, but for me, it was just tough. It was a tough sell. Uh, the referee gets knocked off in the in the match, and all of a sudden, you have Alexander Wolf come out on behalf of Walter. The, the other two Imperium guys were just died in the ladder match where they got beat up. 
And then, however, you have Eo Joe Dragunov come out, and he fights off Wolf, and he goes after him. He uh, fights on behalf of Coffee, and now uh, Walter is able to hit a uh, lariat, however, onto Dragunov. And eventually, as they get into the ring, there's uh, some uh, good kickouts. Uh, Walter went for a power bomb, but uh, Coffee uh, flipped out on the move. He hit uh, a best uh, for the Bells, spinning lariats, but uh, Walter kicked out of the move. He goes for a third attempt. Walter docked, and he was able to get a sleeper transition to a headlock, and then he gets it into the sleeper, and he is able to get him to the ground, and he uses the sleeper suplex followed by a power bomb, and he holds onto it, and then, like once he he sets up that submission, he he's able to hit him with some moves, and he finally gets a head and arm clutch, and it, it ends. Uh, Walter gets uh, Joe Coffee to tap out. I was fine with the ending. I didn't mind. I thought it was a new. It was more of a creative ending, more of a realistic ending, and uh, Joe Coffee tops out. Uh, Walter retains the UK title, and that's it. Imperium celebrates, matches it. The, the show is over. Looks like everything's done. Holy shit, it's the Undisputed Era. They come out, beat down Imperium. Imperium gets her asses kicked. Undisputed Era stands tall, sets up. Worlds collide. Undisputed Era against Imperium. That's going to be a great main event for Worlds Collide. And uh, this show, I thought UK TakeOver Brooklyn 2, good show overall. I really enjoyed it. Hell of a match with uh, the Tyler Bate match was the match of the night. Ladder match was very good. The women's match was very good. Main event was, that was decent. I thought it was on a huge chain of it, but I thought you had a very good show here. I thought it was similar to last, which was also a good show. So I enjoyed it. I think this is great for the UK. I think it's more of a grounded show, more of a regional show. However, I still think from a TV perspective, it's good. Even though it's in the afternoon, I still think it delivers. So uh, I enjoyed UK TakeOver Block Cool 2. And uh, hopefully we get more good NXT shows. You have Worlds Collide coming up in a few weeks. And we have uh, another TakeOver in the U.S. for Portland. So uh, NXT continues to li- deliver.